Hello YouTube, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make it so that if you press a certain key on your keyboard, you'll get an aura. And if you press it again, it'll turn it off. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I have some auras and I have a character. And I'm gonna begin the video by teaching you the theory behind what we're gonna script today so that you can better understand it. And then we'll get right to coding. So what we're gonna do is, as you can see inside of a certain part there's a bunch of particles and when we're giving an aura to a player what we're doing is we're taking all the particles that are inside the part and we're going to duplicate it and then we're going to take the three new duplicated auras and we're going to add it to our character and if you add it to the character like this it's just going to show up on here which is not what we want to do we want to add it all the way to the humanoid root part and that's basically what we're going to be coding today. All right, so first go to starter pack and you're going to create a local script. And then inside of this local script, this is where we're going to actually code the press key functionality. So whenever they press a certain key, we want the aura to be put on the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to get output open and we're going to begin coding. So local p equals game.players.local player. And this will be the player. P will be the player. Actually, let's call it player. Oops. Player. So player will represent the local player, which is basically the player that's playing the game. And then we're going to get the mouse object. Now we have the player and we have the mouse. And now we need to detect when the player presses a key. So we're going to do mouse dot key down connect function key. And now if the player presses a key, we can figure out what key they pressed. So if we do print player pressed key, it'll print whatever key they pressed. So let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm gonna press a key, boom. As you can see right here, whatever key I'm pressing is being printed. So now that we have all of that, we can get rid of this and we can detect what key they pressed. And let's figure out what key bind we want. So we have three auras right here. I'm gonna start with this yellow one. And I'm gonna make the key bind Q. So I'm gonna say if key equals equals Q. And what this is doing is if the player pressed Q on their keyboard. So whenever the player presses Q on their keyboard, whatever we write here is gonna execute. So I can literally print player wants to get an aura. So now if we play it, and if I press Q, it'll print that I want to get an aura. Q, boom. And if I press any other key, it won't work. Only for Q. All right, so now that we have all of this made, we need to set up the server scripts. So inside of server script service, we're gonna make a script. And we're going to need to use a remote event. And we're gonna call this transform. And now we're going to go here and we're just gonna go game.replicated storage.transform fire server and we're going to fire the name of the aura that they want to transform into. So first let's organize this a little bit. We're gonna make a folder and we're gonna call it auras. And then I'm gonna take these three and I'm gonna put it inside of auras. So now it's a little bit more organized. Now if I press Q, I want to transform it to this yellow one. So let's see what this yellow one is called. I think it's called Basic Super Aura. So inside of here, I'm going to put the name of the aura. And now, under the script, we're going to type game.replicatedStorage and transform the on server event connect function player and the name of the aura. So we'll just call it aura. So now what this is doing is in the local script, when they press Q, it's going to go to this remote event right here. It's going to fire it with this right here. So it's basically going to say, this player wants to transform into basic super aura. And then when that happens, it's going to go into this script. And then whatever we run here is going to execute. So as soon as we run this line right here with the fire server, everything inside of this right here, every, everything in between the function is going to execute. So let's try it. Print player.name wants to transform into one. How about wants to get so now it should print my name and then it should say wants to get basic super aura. And we can basically get rid of this now. So let's try it. And we're going to press Q. There you go. Senku script wants to get basic super aura. 
So just to reiterate, this is just running the communication from the client, which is the local script, onto the server, which is the script. So from the player to the server, basically. And what we're doing is we're just firing into this remote event called transform. And we're just putting the name of the aura that they want. And then here, we're going to run the actual aura stuff. So if you remember in the beginning of the video, what I basically said was we're going to take an aura, we're going to take uh, whatever's inside of the aura, we're going to clone it, and then we're going to put it inside, not inside of the character, but inside of the humanoid root part. Because if you put it inside of the humanoid root part, it'll actually go into the character. But if you put it inside of the model that holds the character, it'll get put in the origin, which is the spawn location. And that's not what we want. So we want to put this cloned aura inside the humanoid root part. So now, let's code that. All right, so now that we know the name of the aura that they want to transform into, what we can do is we can go... So now what we're doing is we know the name of the aura is basic super aura because that's what we said right here. And what we're doing is we're getting the object, which is going to be inside of the auras folder. Game.workspace means this thing right here. Auras means look inside of auras that's inside of workspace and then find the aura. So it's going to find basic super aura. And what we're doing here is if the aura actually exists, because in here we can type anything we want. And if it doesn't exist here, it's going to throw an error. It's going to break your game. That's why we have this if statement. So we're going to change it back to basic super aura. And now, just like I said before, we're going to clone every particle that's inside of the aura object. So to do that, we're going to go for so now what we're doing is we're looping inside of everything that's inside of the aura object. So for example, for divine aura, it's going to go through this one, it's going to go through this one, it's going to go through this one. And what we're doing here is we're checking if the actual looped thing is a particle emitter, which this one, as you can see, it's a particle emitter. If you resize this particle emitter. So now that we've looped through everything inside of the object and we've checked that it's a particle emitter, if you remember, the next thing we have to do is clone it. So, local particle clone equals v clone. And v is just the name of whatever it's looping through. So, in the first instance, v will be this. Second time, v will be this. Third time, it'll be this. So, we're just going to clone it like that. That's basically what we're going to do. And we're going to set the parent to the humanoid root part of our character. So, let's do that. Particle clone dot parent equals player dot character dot humanoid root part. So now with that, our code should be complete. Let's try it. Q. Boom. Just like that, we got it working. All right. So now, what if the player already transformed and they want to turn their aura off? So to make that, we have to go. We have to go back to the script. We have to make a variable called local. Or actually, we're going to say local player remove aura. We're going to set it to false. Now what we have to do is we have to go for Okay, so basically what I did here was I made a variable called player removed aura and we're going to and I set it to false. And we went through this whole loop where we loop through every object in the humanoid root part. And if the object was a particle emitter, then we destroyed it. And um, basically what this did was it removed the aura. So it looked through our humanoid root part. If it found an aura, then it removed it, and it set this to true. And then we checked if not player removed aura. That means if we didn't find an aura, and we didn't remove it, then we can actually transform. So now if you press Q, it'll do both giving the aura and removing the aura. I'm gonna press Q, I have the aura, press Q again, and it's gone. Press Q again, it's right there. Q again, it's gone. So now that we've done it for one aura, we're gonna do it for the other two. And since we already have all of this set up, it's really, really simple. All we have to do is change the key bind. So instead of doing if key equals Q, we just have to do another if statement. Else if key equals equals, let's say E, then all we have to do is just tell the server we want to transform again with the name of the aura. So there's divine aura. Let's do that. And else if key equals equals R, then we can do it with another aura. And we're going to put it right there. 
And now if you press E, it'll transform into this. Press R, it'll transform into this. I'm gonna press E, oops, E, and there I am. There's my aura. Press E again, it's gone. Press Q, yellow. Q, gone. R, red, fiery aura. As you can see here, R is the fiery aura. Press R again, it's gone. So, that is the end of the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video.